so I'm marketing manager at AEI. I manage all the marketing for all our releases, whether it's compilations or artist releases. Um, so I thought I'd just go through a little bit about what AEI do, because um, half the time most people go like, what exactly do you guys do again? Um, so basically we um, are an independent music company, uh, community, sorry, and we inspire and nurture uh, emerging and talent we provide them with the infrastructure and environment to kind of realize their dream, dreams. Essentially, how we work is across music, media, and live. Uh, the music team, we do everything from distribution, publishing, sync, and then live, we do small club events to like big room festivals. Uh, and then the media team bring in like work with the big brands uh, with sponsorship and also the YouTube channel networks. I guess the main thing that we're known for is YouTube in the sense that we own and uh, operate brands like UKF, All Trap Music, The Sound You Need and a combined views that we have across our channel of networks is 7.3 billion views and we've got like 26.4 million subscribers across all our channels. So um, our business core cool business kind of started off from YouTube. Um, so that's just a, a selection of brands that we either own or that we kind of work with. So we've got like NCS, Drum and Bass Arena, UKF that are like own brands. And then we also work with partner brands uh, and labels such as Butters, Let It Roll, which is like one of the biggest drum and bass festivals in, in the world apparently. Um, and also like various sort of event companies. Um, and that's just a little list of kind of the things that we're involved in, which I mentioned earlier. Um, so YouTube marketing, um, when I was thinking about what to talk about, for us, it kind of comes across under two categories. Uh, so it's the marketing of releases and then also our own sort of channels. Uh, for the purpose, because we've only got 15 minutes, I'm just going to focus on marketing releases. Um, so... The basics of doing any sort of marketing plan is just working out what the objectives are, uh, just like w what you would do with anything else. So whether it's like brand or artist awareness, uh, whether it's reach that you're after or, you know, streams and sales. With everything, especially with YouTube, the main thing is content. Content is king. So you once you've figured out what your objectives are, you need to work out what it is exactly that you've got to use to do this. Um, with YouTube as well, whether you're, you've got to take into account the devices, whether you're working, you know, if you're watching it on TV, they will serve you more long form content. Whereas if you're on mobile, it'll be much shorter clips. So just taking all that into account and then kind of working out the different types of content you could create. Uh, so one of the, the key things, which a lot of our brands kind of started out as, as curated channels, is making is getting your premiere or upload on one of the channels. Like we've got millions of subscribers and and fans across our networks. So having a track placed on one of our channels, depending on the genre or the kind of track it is, will guarantee you like a certain number of views. Well, maybe not guarantee, but you will get a certain number of views. Uh, so that's UKF, uh, the sound you need. But as you know, there's like many different kind of uh, YouTube channel curators out there. So there's like Majestic, Liquicity, Skank and Bass, uh, Labelle Music. So it really depends what genre you're looking for. You will find somewhere to put your music out there. Uh, the other thing is like remix packages. Uh, back in the day, it was all about radio, getting a remix package done. So you've got different DJs playing it. Uh, are YouTube curators now the, the new radio essentially like so for example Ed Sheeran we had like a uh, all trap sorry trap nation or not all trap music um shape of you remix on there one on proximity then you've got like James Arthur and rudimental again on UKF um I guess having a remix package as well having on one of these kind of channels is that it gives like say more commercial music a bit more credibility with the underground scene so like what Kelly was saying earlier is like opening it up to new audiences that might not necessarily listen to your music um, and then the I guess everyone talks about music videos is like one of the key pieces of content that any release well most releases will have to utilize previously it would have been placed on tv which uh is can be quite difficult where like major label artists or big artists seem to get it so this is one video 
that we created, uh, well, the label Butters uh, put together for the release of their TQD's debut album. We placed that on UKF. Uh, it was a really cool video for Letter to EZ, and that did really well. They had like a couple of other videos, but they were placed on like Fact Mag on their own channel. But YouTube curator channels also great um, place to put them on. Uh, what the pros of, uh, and it's not working. Is it stuck? Oh, there we go. Um, the pros of having a music video on a YouTube channel is that your ability to be able to track exactly how it's doing. So using things like Linkfire and other smart tracking links, you're able to see exactly what sort of traffic it uh, drove to your to to sales. Um, you, it's a lot simpler than getting it on TV. It's all about relationships. You don't have to pay a lot of money to pluggers. Um, and yeah, there's a like a wide range of places that you could potentially put them on. The cons are that obviously if it was played on TV, you would earn publishing. With YouTube channels, it really depends on how they're set up. Uh, so you might be missing out a little bit of money on there. Uh, the other thing is collaborations. Uh, so there's millions of uh, channels on YouTube. So there's music channels, there's gaming channels. So collaboration is like, how are you gonna open up your audiences to like a sort of bigger platform? So one of the things that we did uh, for All Trap Music, the founder is also an artist called Jai K. Uh, for his release, Take Me, we partnered up with a ditto from, she's one of the popular dancers on World of Dance, which itself has a, like a massive following. Uh, she was naturally using his music uh, or music, or, from All Trap Music uh, in her routine. So we contacted her and asked her to be in the music video. So she herself on her own YouTube channel has 1.6 million subscribers. All Trap Music has 1.4 million. So that kind of opened up the, the audience pool. Um, the other thing, so if you don't have big budgets for your music videos uh, to create content, there are things like Street Player. They're a great um, channel and network. They work with young people to create content, give them the skills of using video, editing, all of that. So, and they create the content for free. So essentially you give them the music and they've got dancers in their network that will create a little piece and then that will go up on your YouTube channel. Um, and then there's other things like sofa sounds and all kinds of things that you can kind of work with and collaborate. Uh, one thing that we do at AEI as well, like working with someone like us, is uh, with the media team, we have a lot of um, sponsorship and brand deals. So if you don't have budget for your artist releases, uh, say, for example, but as one of, again, a TQD track, they were part of this campaign we did with Heineken. So they got like a massive budget to create a music video. So sponsored content um, is another way to sort of get funding for your music videos. Um, the other type of content, so NCS is one of our biggest brands. I think it's like almost 13 million subscribers. Um, and NCS allows uh, YouTubers and uh, people on Twitch to use the music copyright free in the, their user generated content. Uh, this is one that was created uh, using an Alan Walker track, just like a random video of dropping a phone in a lava lamp. Um, got 15 million views and obviously we all know how well the Alan Walker track went and now he's a global superstar. So just content going viral, people just hearing your music in all sorts. So so music used by, um, from NCS is used by uh, from beauty vloggers, gamers, sports videos, and so much more. Uh, and then there's other types of content you can create, tutorials, uh, lyric videos, uh, interviews, and like the, the thing is endless, like, for example, tutorials you can place on uh, music school uh, YouTube channels like Point Blank. So there's lots of things that you can do. The other thing that uh, we also do is, like, advertising. Um, so f with our whole channel of networks, a uh, network of channels, God, I can't speak today, um, we've got millions of viewers. Uh, and one thing you can do is remarket to the channels. Uh, so basically similar to what Kelly was talking about, like the pixel that you have on Facebook, you have the same thing on YouTube as well. So we are essentially able to target anyone that's ever viewed a video, just visited the channel, subscribed to channel, commented, and then basically that will like stalk them across the internet with ads for whatever we want. So by doing that, you could get lower cost per clicks, like almost four to 5% click through rate. So how we would work with,
with labels, uh, we, which we have done in the past, not necessarily this one, but I just used that as an example. So o over time, there's been many Ed Sheeran remixes on UKF. So if they wanted to come to us again for the new release, we could essentially create a remarketing list um, and then they could then target everyone that's kind of viewed the video there with um, maybe a new video to watch or whether it's ads to buy or or stream a new release and then also if there's a show happening to target them with that. So advertising also is a really great tool to use for marketing. Um, and then the other thing is like, I just came here for the comments. Um, I mean, a lot of people, I think we spend a lot of time just reading comments on YouTube uploads. Uh, you could waste hours of your day in there. Um, so we found that by engaging users in the comment section, even some of them might be a little bit crazy, but it does, whether it's negative or not, the, the fact is the more engagement you get, the, the more the algorithm picks it up and thinks people want to watch it. So just making sure that you're talking to your audience, as you would do with Facebook or anywhere, um, also helps. Um, the other thing is data. I know every like a single every single person goes on about it, uh, but there's like vast amounts of it on YouTube. You'll have like how long a person watched the video, at what point they stopped watching. Um, there's where they're coming from. You get like country data, uh, gender, traffic sources. Uh, also like where where they're like watching these um, videos, whether it's on their like feed where they subscribe to things, whether it's on the actual channel page. Uh, so by looking at all of this data, it's so for example, if it's not even on the channel page, you want to figure out how you can make sure your content is discoverable and how you can kind of make sure that it's being surfaced so that people can find your, um, your videos. Uh, one thing that we do at AEI as well is we have our own in-house analytics platform. You get like sort of streaming data, iTunes data. We plan on getting YouTube data also in there. So basically, we can compare uh, what Spotify is doing and what YouTube doing, is doing. So on NCS, for example, uh, some of the artists that we have on there, they'll do amazingly well on YouTube, get like millions of streams, whereas on Spotify, they won't do as well. So by having kind of both side by side, we're able to kind of work out what what's the reason or why, and then be able to market that particular release in the correct way. Um, yeah, so basically by getting the use YouTube data, you can sort of plan other activities, whether it's tours, you might see countries where like, you know, you've got loads of views that you might have not even thought about, like having shows there. Or again, like I mentioned about the dwell time, why are people stopping at a certain point? Is it like the intro too long? Um, also, what I mentioned earlier, why, where they're consuming it, how to optimize it. Uh, then there's like loads of different tools as well that you can use on YouTube to, um, to promote your music, whether it's just the video as well as, um, you know, promoting sales. So one thing that we've been using a lot is uh, CTAs, a uh, call to actions. So there's one over there like saying follow us on Spotify. It's essentially, I, I think it's like a loophole or something, but basically it's like you set up an ad in AdWords but you pause the campaign so you're not actually spending any money and then it allows you to create this little call to action that comes up. So you can either link to Spotify or Linkfire or whatever, wherever it is that you want to link to. Uh, we first started using it on NCS and we had like 124% uplift on Spotify followers. Uh, as you can see, they'll get millions and millions of views on there. So people will kind of follow you. Um, and then, like I said, you can kind of click uh, link it to anywhere. Um, and then the other thing, I don't know how many of you have seen it, but a lot of YouTube channels are doing this now. It's like a 24-7 live stream radio where you're kind of feeding through a Spotify playlist that is playing through YouTube live uh, constantly. Um, so on NCS, we have everything like from 2,500 to maybe even more kind of listeners at a time. Uh, you get this little side panel on there where you can chat to the fans. Uh, you, there's like little chat bots which you can add, you can put in, make make it like a gamification element, drop in links. Um, this, a lot of YouTube channels are doing that. NCS owns all its repertoire, so everything that we're feeding through from Spotify is 100% owned by NCS, so it's not really a problem. However, I'm pretty sure YouTube is going to start figuring out because a lot of other channels are doing with music that they don't own, so I'm not sure how that's going to pan out in the next few months. Um, the other thing is is just using other other cross platform sort of promotions. So Instagram is great for 
doing short teaser clips of the uploads that you'll have on YouTube and then kind of pushing them through to the channel later. Um, I think I also might have was that quite fast as well and I can't speak anymore, it's the end of the mm -hmm. day. So um, if anyone has any questions at all? Okay. Nope. <laughs> Strong yes. <laughs> yeah, that's me now. <laughs> like, no questions. Cool. Oh, there's one over there. Yeah, so do you have AdWords at, at all? So you have to have access to your YouTube channel and AdWords. So you set, you set up like a video campaign in your AdWords. And then once you've done that, you select the video you want to put in and then go into your YouTube manager in the dashboard. You will see a, um, a little box appear where you can put in the link. I, I can give you my details later and I can show you how it's done. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.